Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you today. Listen to some of these headlines we got for you. UFC and crypto, we're going to talk about that. Visa goes deep on crypto. Oh, my God, do they ever. Big institutions buying crypto, and we'll tell you which ones. Ripple's director of develop, developer relations says XRP is a better version of Bitcoin. Ooh, careful. You may get triggered if you're a Bitcoin maxi. India's crypto, well, it's been sketchy, but they say it's finally here. Jamaica Central Bank, France and Singapore, you're not going to believe what's going on. Gary Gensler's back in the news. Watch out, crypto exchanges. I'm telling you, there's a narrative here. I haven't heard it almost anywhere else, but right here on this channel. And he's talking about it. We're going to get into it. You're going to want to know every bit of it. And BitBoy is back, and he says he's breaking some news news that Ripple has got a white paper for a stable coin and they're going to launch it soon. Let's roll that beautiful intro. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one lined up for you today. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here. Look at this 1.376. It's dropped about 10 or so billion just since my first video this morning. Things are rolling over. We did go and touch on Coins Kids in the first video who said if we don't get past this crucial point of 61 cent and stay above it, which could prove to be a bottom. And then things could get very bullish from here. But if we don't, and you know we've talked about this, the longer we sit at that resistance level and we don't get through it, the greater chance that we roll below to lower support levels, which could take us all the way to the 38, 40 cent range if we don't continue to hold and move forward. Head on a swivel. This is crypto. You never know. Let's look at the range of XRP right now sitting at 62 cents. We're low range is at 61.47. High range 67.14. We'll keep an eye on it. Let's get to the news. Crypto.com becomes UFC's official global fight kit partner. Take that. How about that? You know, we're seeing this more and more. There was something we reported on not long ago. I think it was Crypto.com during the football over in Europe uh, championships or playoffs or whatever it was there. I think that they're actually a sponsor there, and it may be another company. I've got it mixed up. But you're going to see more of this, and I think Major League Baseball picked up a heavy sponsor as well uh, in the crypto side. So normalizing all of this for the masses, and guess who else is too? You're going to like this string of news. This is from Hall of Famer XRP Crypto Wolf. And it says Visa says they're doing a lot to create an ecosystem that makes cryptocurrency more usable and more like any other currency. You want to know why they're doing that? Because here's one of the reasons they're so excited. Visa says crypto link card usage tops $1 billion in the first half of 2021. Hello. <laughs> this is what makes the clock tick right here, right? This is how they go. Oh, you know what? I don't even, I, we're doing this crypto thing. And guess what? This is what they're excited about to go along with the $1 billion worth of profits in half a year. Visa said digital payments such as cryptocurrency had the potential to disrupt $18 trillion of annual consumer spending with cash and checks. Hello, I think they call this business incentive, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the party. Yeah, and here's some other people coming to the party. It's big institutions, and they're buying XRP, BTC, ETH, DOT, ADA, BCH as crypto fund inflows return. Well, I tell you, you know, this to me is not a surprise, right? It really is not a surprise. And look, and it, when it comes to XRP, this is why they're buying XRP, because Matt Hamilton's laid it out for everybody here. He's the new Ripple Director for Developer Relations, and he says XRP is a better version of Bitcoin, but their use cases are the same, even though XRP is way more decentralized than Bitcoin. Boy, the Bitcoin maxis will be triggered now, won't they? <laughs> oh, wait till we get to the Gary Gensler news. Oh, Boy, screaming from the heavens, a gnashing of the teeth, possibly. You know, uh, India's finance minister says the crypto bill is finally ready. Key word here, finally. I mean, this has been like a bad tennis match. I mean, you know, it's over, back, over, back, hit the net twice, four times 100. It They have been 
you know, one of these uh, governments that's just like, we're doing it, we're not doing it, we're doing it, we're not doing it, right? And, and finally, ready, it says, well, you know what? I think I'll believe it when it's finally passed. Looking right here, Jamaica Central Bank to start CBDC pilot with financial institutions in August. Come on in. Yeah. Jamaica, man. You know, uh, I love it because this is just more narrative of understanding what's going on in even further development with France and Singapore, because we've reported on this before with them uh, piloting cross-border CBDC transactions. Now, what's important to understand about this is that this particular test is not just CBDC to CBDC. This is CBDC settlement of securities. Come on in. Some have talked about here on the channel, like myself, the idea that XRP could be used back in to settle the entire derivatives market for the world. Yeah, that's all the money, isn't it? Looking right here, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler told lawmakers that investor protection rules should apply to crypto exchanges. Now, when you first hear that, you think, well, of course, Gary, can we get some real action going on here? But listen, it gets deeper than that. It's much deeper than that. You need to really go down into these things. You know, let's take a look at here. Security Exchange Commission Chairman Gary Gensler has told House lawmakers that investor protection rules should apply to crypto exchanges. Listen to this next line. They should apply to crypto exchanges similar, similar to those that cover equities and derivatives. Regulated exchanges are required by law to have rules that prevent fraud and promote fairness. He's telling you the rules should be much like similar to the stock market. And the rules that we already have. Hello. Is this on? A lot of people have scoffed at me about the idea that the majority of this market could be labeled as something like digital asset securities. And then that framework could be tucked into the broker dealer network and the compliance and all of it that he is really pointing to right here. We will see if I'm wrong. I'll make the video. But exchanges face no such standard, Mr. Gensler said at this Piper Sandler Global Exchange and FinTech conference last month. When you go into one of these exchanges, you don't know whether the order books is accurately reporting the bids and offers. Mr. Gensler said, you don't really know if there is front running going on. You don't know whether some of the trading that is reported is real or fake. Front running involves the misuse of customer information to trade for one's gain. Now, we reported yesterday about the idea of, you know, uh, Janet Yellen, who was at the Federal Reserve back in 2014 and commented about how they wanted to regulate Bitcoin and similar cryptocurrencies at the time, but they didn't have the ability or authority to do so. And now that she's the head of the Treasury Department, she's back addressing that issue. And she says, now headed up by her, Janet Yellen, in these early stages of reviewing whether authority to regulate payment networks, which is what these protocols are, like the XRP ledger with an XRP token, could apply to some crypto assets, one possible tool using the Financial Stability Oversight Council. You know, uh, it goes on to talk about, you know, to target crypto assets such as cashback stable coins. Hello, Tether and the gun sites, which regulators have said could become a source of systemic risk. This is what I've talked about. Systemically important designations specifically by the U.S. Treasury and FSOC, the Financial Stability Oversight Council. How long have we been talk about, talking about this? Two years? And here it is. And we've got her from the Fed understanding how she had to sit on her hands because they didn't have the ability to regulate any of it at her time at the Fed. But now that she's at the Treasury, they can get that done. We will see. These things are coming together. Do you think it's mutually exclusive that Binance is being cited? Not Binance US. And I believe that's why Brian Brooks is actually the CEO at that platform now. Because he came from regulatory side. Right. He's a former regulator and a lawyer. Right. So obviously he knows what to do to stay inside the bounds of, you know, uh, being compliant and running a really regulated uh, market uh, or a platform for the market. 
And looking here, when I look at this, you know, I think, okay, do you think that the reason they're pointing out Binance, which I believe may be the largest exchange in the world, but is it licensed anywhere? Because the Cayman Islands just recently said, no, it's not. And following that news, the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA in the UK, which is the equivalent of the SEC here or FINRA combined, has recently stopped the ability for Barclays to provide payment for its residents to the platform. You think that's mutually exclusive that Gary Gensler on the other side of the pond happens to be talking about all of this with the exchanges should look a lot more like the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ and the compliance that they meet? Oh, I think not. I think not. This is Brad Garlinghouse in the news. Shout out to this guy who keeps Ripple pointed true north no matter what's going on, including the SEC Ripple case. Shout out to him and the entire Ripple team. Uh, he points out here that Ashish Birla has really said, uh, to build this future, we're evolving RippleNet to provide more than just crypto-enabled instant cross-border payments. Listen very closely to this. It's about being the bridge between a growing world of tokenized services and traditional enterprises that want to enter this space. More to come. I think this is such an amazing comment, and the thread is amazing by Ashish. I'm not going to run you through the whole thread, but you get it because there's a summation of it all right there. Brad Garlinghouse says to Ashish Berla lays out our vision of for RippleNet to serve enterprises in an increasingly tokenized world. We're building the future of crypto-enabled financial services one block at a time. That's exactly what's going on here. And I want to remind people that I know you know that XRP is about all the money and to serve as a bridge asset to all of the world's money. But do you really get the idea and understanding that Ripple, as Brad Garlinghouse has said many times, is a blockchain infrastructure company? And as XRP is to all the money, Ripple is the bridge to all of the world's business, financial or otherwise, because they are a blockchain infrastructure company. And you can't just simply start using stuff. You have to build from your legacy systems into this digitized, tokenized world. And that's exactly what they're there to do with Ripple and RippleNet. You know... One of the things we've talked about is back in 2019, when we were fortunate enough to be able to attend Swell, right before that Swell event of 2019, David Schwartz introduced the idea that you could launch stable coins off of the XRP ledger. And it was at that time, you know, and I've always been a proponent that believes that at some point we will see some kind of a price set or price floor for XRP, the digital asset, which will serve, I believe, as a bridge asset to all the money. And for that to be the most reliable, liquid, fastest settling, scalable, secure asset to use over what is currently available in the world, I believe the price of the asset XRP will need to be so tight of a trading range, so reliable of a price, that it makes the world say, why would I use anything else? BitBoy here says at 4810 to 5210 that Ripple has a white paper for a stable coin their self. Now that is a pretty remarkable piece of information. Let's listen to him tell it right here. That this is going to be uh, something that is a, a delaying tactic to be able to force Ripple to settle. Because if you look at the amount of money that Ripple is losing from the suppression of its trading since it's hardly on any exchanges right now, uh, you'll find that actually probably the fine that they'll get from the SEC will be less than the amount they're losing by not being able to be traded on Coinbase or many of these other exchanges. So I think we will see them come out with a settlement before October 15th. I think probably in August, probably when we will see this. Um, We'll have to see what happens there. Uh, They hired two more attorneys to work on the case. 
Um, yep, these are just two attorneys, uh, one defending Chris Larson. Uh, then we got this story here. Guys, here's, here's a story from January 19th, 2021. And you got, this is it, guys. I'm getting exclusive information here. You're not going to get this on any other channel. I know this because we've been working on this story for a few days now. And uh, we have confirmed that it is true. I can't show you. There's stuff I can't show you. But we have confirmed that this is true. Will Ripple ever issue a stable coin? The firm has tentatively explored price-pegged crypto. Ripple's XRP token is under legal scrutiny, raising the question of complementary strategies. Ripple has expressed interest in bank stable coins and CBDCs. Though Ripple can support third-party stable coins, the firm is unlikely to issue a tether-like coin for general circulation. As Ripple faces a lawsuit from the US SEC and Masti listing, some may wonder if its complementary business plan is viable. Uh, Ripple's expressed past interest in CBDCs. Um, let's see here if there's anything in here about uh, stable coins, Tether. Here we go. So Tether alternative is unlikely, or, or is it? It is clear that Ripple does not intend to issue its own stable coin into general circulation. It is extremely unlikely that the firm will introduce a coin com comparable to Tether, DAI, or USDC. It is much more plausible that a private bank or central bank will build a stable coin on XRP Ledger or XRPL, a decision that would be similar to Ukraine's plans to use Stellar. However, that sort of development will not necessarily generate lasting attention for Ripple if the firm does not pursue the relationship. In light of those facts, Ripple will likely continue to focus on settlement in general rather than the stable coins in particular. Ooh, well, ooh, well, ooh, well. Let me tell you this. I've seen it. There is a white paper from Ripple on their stablecoin. That is right, guys. Not all, This is no longer theoretical. Will they come out with a stablecoin? Now, look, you come out with a white paper, you come out with plans. I, I've i been working on this story for a few days. As I said, several days ago, I received actually two different uh, screenshots of emails regarding this and showing me exactly what it is. Screenshots from the white paper. They are sending the white paper out to uh, people they potentially want involved in this. So they have not created the stablecoin. This article, dead wrong. I, I can tell you, the, it's the first place you're ever going to hear this. There is an XRP stablecoin coming, 100%. Well, Wow, how about that? He says he has seen the white paper, for which none of us have that there is a XRP stablecoin coming. Now, I have said and floated out many times the idea that XRP, the asset, if it were to get, let's say, a security designation, just as one way to look at this, they could create a stablecoin for XRP for all the banks and clearing houses to use. And wouldn't that stablecoin set at whatever price they wanted to represent it at whatever level they wanted. And that would provide the liquidity they need. And wouldn't that be the most reliable asset to use for settlement backed by XRP itself? Now, this is pretty remarkable when you start to go into the idea also of a forced buyback of the escrow, not what you and I hold, but the escrow itself. This goes into another conversation where you lean into that and say to yourself, oh, what if the Treasury did come in every month and purchase the escrow for a certain price and then they release a stable coin for XRP for all of the entities using it back end? Oh, this could work. This could work very big. And they don't have to have a security designation to do this either. They could simply launch a stable coin off of the asset, regardless of what's classified as, and use it. And that would allow them to let the asset XRP run free in price and have a stable coin at a very, very reliable price that they can always count on for settlement that won't cost them to hold it as it does with gold or Bitcoin or other things because of the volatility of the market itself, including XRP. I don't know, but don't think of a stable coin as a dollar. Think of a stable coin as pegged as whatever price they put it at, right? Required for the liquidity to suit the demand. That's what we're really talking about here. And that's going to do it for me. We will keep you up to date on this as it develops. Hopefully we can get some 
actual information that we can all take a look at and try to understand better for ourselves. But that's going to do it for me. I trust capital is the best gold, crypto, silver IRA on the planet, bar none, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you check that out and all the other links in the description box and the comment section because they are trusted, vetted links. Be very careful for scammers and things that you click on. Those links are very good links, take you directly to the company and get you the best deals while you're there. I'll catch all of you on the next one.